breaking news. San Antonio police are at the scene of a major crash in the 10,200 block of Dugas Drive. That's near Petranco and Loop 1604. Katrina Weber is live on the scene with the latest information. Good morning, Katrina. Good morning. Uh, what we found out from police is two teenage girls on their way to high school, Stevens High School, were hit by an SUV that went out of control. Police have a very active scene going on here right now. That SUV, in fact, is still there on the sidewalk where it ended up. Now, police say those girls were right there on the sidewalk, walking to school, doing everything right, when for some reason that driver lost control of the SUV, crossed over the lane of traffic, and hit those girls on the sidewalk. Uh, police and paramedics had to work to free them from underneath the vehicle. Both girls rushed to the hospital. Uh, they are critical but stable, the last word we had from police. Uh, their father did come here to the scene. The girls are sisters, about 15 years old, both of them. Uh, and so they are being treated at the hospital. Again, critical but stable, police say. The driver being evaluated by police and also paramedics, trying to figure out exactly what went wrong, why she lost control of the car. As you can see, a lot of traffic in this area right now because this intersection, which is South Ellison and Dugas, is uh, closed down while they're doing this investigation. And they say this will be closed for uh, the foreseeable future, at least until they're finished with the work that they have to do here. Reporting live on the far west side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Let's look at today's 9 at 9. Planned Parenthood is filing a restraining order against the state of Texas over the new abortion law financial incentive. That incentive allows private citizens to sue anyone for helping a woman gain access to an abortion if she's more than six weeks pregnant. Overseas, there has been a terrorist attack at a shopping center in a residential neighborhood of Auckland, New Zealand. Six people were injured, some in critical condition. The attacker, a known ISIS sympathizer, was killed by police. Poland will temporarily house about 500 Afghan evacuees who work for NATO. They will remain in Poland for up to three months before moving on to other countries. Back here at home, local officials are reporting 23 new COVID-related deaths. Meanwhile, hospitalizations for COVID-19 patients are down to 1,268. 31 of those patients are children. Dr. Anthony Fauci is defending COVID-19 booster shots. He says data shows immunity provided by the original vaccines can wear off after eight months. But other organizations, including the World Health Organization, argue the focus should be on getting shots into the arms of the unvaccinated. The Caldor Fire in Northern California is one of a few wildfires to cross from one side of the vast Sierra Nevada mountain range to the other. The fast moving fire has burned more than 210,000 acres so far. Fire crews only have about 25% of that fire contained. Hurricane Ida blamed for at least 59 deaths this morning. President Joe Biden approving an emergency declaration overnight for New Jersey and New York due to extreme flooding there. Meanwhile, President Biden is expected to visit Louisiana today to survey damage from Hurricane Ida. He plans to meet with state and local leaders from impacted communities. After the tours, he will deliver remarks on his administration's response to Ida. San Antonio Food Bank needs more volunteers to help people affected in Louisiana. The nonprofit says communities there are still lacking basic resources and six trucks of supplies have been requested. For more information on how to help, just visit our website, ksat.com. And that is today's Nine at Nine. Here is a question for your Friday. Should wedding guests have to pay if they fail to show up? Hmm, like a missed doctor's appointment. The answer is yes, according to one Chicago couple. This story went like wildfire online this week. Yeah, they posted a $240 bill to no-show wedding guests. And of course, yeah, that sparked an online debate. There it they really are. It really did. So the newlyweds recently married down in Jamaica, and they had to pay for each seat beforehand. While 109 people are invited, only 101 showed up. So after repeated RSVPs, those eight guests didn't tell the Simmons that they weren't attending and the couple had already paid the result roughly about $120 per person for the unused seats. So when they got home, they created an invoice for the cost of two seats and put it on social media where the photo took a life of its own. Uh, and then a quote from the groom said, we never had any intentions of sending it out. 
Uh, he said it hurts more to show it. The invoice titled no call, no show guest explains because you didn't call or give us proper notice, you wouldn't be in attendance. This is amount what you owe us for paying us for your seat or seats in advance. So both uh, Deidre and Doug each own a small business and they say they've received support from all over the world, but some of those responses weren't too kind. Newlyweds say they ultimately got what they wanted. The invoice was really, really just to send a message. Oh yeah, uh, he said, what do you say? I wanted this to become a teachable moment. Mm -hmm. It's a teachable moment. But the invoice even had on there, you can pay us by Zelle or any much, any way, <laughs> other way possible, but they didn't actually send those bills out. No, I don't even think I would post something like that. It's a little passive aggressive in a way. Yeah, <laughs> but, but they did get their message across. They did, definitely. yes. So it definitely is a, a teachable moment. Maybe sometime we'll get a protocol expert on here. We can talk all about the <laughs> ins, and, ins and outs of their decision. Go into depth. Yeah. Well, let's go ahead and take a look outside with live cam this morning. We're at 80 degrees. Temperatures are climbing. It's going to be another hot one. Mm -hmm. You got to take those RSVPs seriously. Mm -hmm. They're very important. Yes. Uh, we've got mostly cloudy skies as we look out over our great city. Temperatures right now are at 80 degrees, but you got to factor in the humidity, of course, which is awful thick and it feels like 85 outside. Heat indices are already in the 90s around Pleasanton and down towards Katua. So, you know, you know, it's going to be a brutal day. We think temperatures will jump up close to 98. It'll feel more like 104, 105 this afternoon. We're still going to keep in a slight chance for a thunderstorm this afternoon too. Thursday and Friday, or I should say Saturday, Sunday. I don't know why it says Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We're going to be up around 99 with mostly sunny skies. So your Liberty weekend is also going to be very hot. Let's go in reverse here and take a look at yesterday's high temperature 99 here in San Antonio, 101 in Pleasanton, 102 in Del Rio. There's no reason to think we won't see these kind of numbers again today. Pollen count is in molds at 1100. It's in the high category. It jumped up fall elm 90 and low. Those are your only two allergens today. And the football forecast for you now it's one of the games tonight. Uh, kickoff's going to be in the low 90s, 92. Sunsets around 753. Again, there could be a stray storm, but it shouldn't interrupt many of our games. By halftime, 89. Try to get some shade. Take some water with you to those games. And we're not done with the heat yet. There are some more rain chances, too, in the forecast. We'll talk about that in just a few minutes. Guys? Thank you, Justin. Some top stories we are following today. A driver is dead following an early morning crash on the northeast side. It happened just after 530 near the intersection of Top Rewine Road and Loma Azul Street. That's not far from I-35 and Lookout Road. Police tell us a driver was speeding and slammed into the trailer of a truck. The driver of that car died on the way to Bamsey. We're going to have the very latest on this story on the news at noon. Fire crews are trying to figure out what sparked a fire at a Northside home last night. It happened at a house in the 300 block of Don Ridge, just south of Jackson Keller. A battalion chief tells KSAT the home was vacant, but there was tons of stuff that had been left behind inside. He also says a vehicle was seen driving away from the scene. Uh, investigators think the fire may have been set on purpose. Crews were able to put it out pretty quickly. And the good news, no one was hurt. A man is facing charges after sparking a fire with a Molotov cocktail. This is 23 year old Tyler John Bennett. According to an arrest affidavit, it happened last month when Bennett threw that Molotov cocktail through the bathroom window of a group home. The next day he is caught on surveillance video lighting a fire on Ritterman Road at the building where his ex girlfriend works. Bennett was finally arrested the following day when he went back to the group home and started breaking windows. Now he's facing arson charges. KSAT Community partnering with the Red Cross to help collect donations for those impacted by Ida. The Hurricane Ida phone bank is happening today, just hours from now, right here on KSAT 12 from noon until 7 p.m. All you have to do is call to help. We'll provide the phone number for you a little bit later on. For more ways to help, head out to KSAT or rather head to KSATcommunity.com. Any morning headlines, some good news when it comes to air quality and another private company's attempt to blast off a rocket did not end well. And watch what you fish for and arm wrestling is a new craze in New York. David Sears is here to arm wrestle with us. Do we ask why? Why is it a new craze? Yeah. Uh, I think it had something to do with the pandemic. Gyms were closed, so people had to figure out some way to uh, still get together and exercise and do some, uh, have some sort of competition. Makes sense. So. Okay. We'll talk about that in just a few minutes. Get ready. <laughs> 
You might be able to breathe a little easier these days and take in a little cleaner air if you live in urban areas or in any part of the world, really. That's according to the UN Weather Agency. The agency says there was a brief and sharp decline in emissions of air pollutants last year. It had to do with the coronavirus pandemic since there were lockdowns in place all over the world and less travel. But there's always a but. They tell us that the reductions were patchy and there were still parts of the world that showed air quality was still worse than their guideline levels. Some of the pollutants were still out there, the same or even higher levels than usual. It was the first air quality and climate bulletin released by the World Meteorological Organization. Fiery scene in the sky over California after an unmanned rocket carrying some satellites exploded. It happened about two minutes into the flight last evening around 7 o'clock California time. It was the first attempt to send a rocket into orbit by the private space company Firefly. It blasted off from the Vandenberg Space Force Base in California. In a statement, the base said an anomaly occurred during the first stage of the flight. By the way, that private company, Firefly, has its headquarters in Austin. And if you are going fishing this Labor Day weekend or know someone who is, watch what you reel in. My pal pulled in a freaky fi Oh, God, that is just nasty. <laughs> it happened in Massachusetts at the Canton Reservoir. He pulled in a six-pound fanged fish called a snakehead. Mm -hmm. I fished this lake my whole life, and when I saw that, I was like, this doesn't belong here. Nothing against the fish, but that's just one ugly fish. Local wildlife experts say it's native to Asia and illegal in the U.S. So oh. Tell that to the fish. <laughs> the good news is, Spouse Catch is one of very few documented in the U.S. They're invasive, and I hear they taste pretty good, believe it or not. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. Uh, There's hey. recipes out there for snakehead. Got to avoid the, the teeth. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Hey, remember that really bad arm wrestling movie, Over the Top, with Sylvester Stallone? Apparently, arm wrestling is now a big thing in New York City these days. They've gone underground. There's info all over the Internet about all the arm wrestling events. There's a big article in the New York Post, and it's men and women ready to lay down their arms. Pull-ups, pull-ups, pull-ups. That is the number one exercise that I focus on. You get those arms strong for that arm wrestling. There's even an app called Arm Bet that allows arm wrestlers to meet up with each other figure out how, how, who has the special tables and put their strengths to the test. That, I don't know, they might have showed the video again, but there's guys out in the street with their arm wrestling tables because, you know, can't be inside with COVID. Mm. Right. You can go outside with COVID and you still arm wrestle. And, you know, there's some people wearing their masks and doing the, yeah. I guess you can't social distance if you are arm wrestling. No. But, you know. Right. You have so, to be kind no, of close. And I'm no, not, I'm not arm wrestling you, Stephanie. I'm sorry. No? I'm not oh. going to do it. Okay. You, you would win. No. <laughs> well, that's why I'm not going to arm wrestle because I don't want to find out. Oh, David. <laughs> I'm not taking her on either. Yeah, no. Thank you, David. All right. Right now, it's about 10 minutes after the hour. 80 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. A New Yorker is finding pure gold and chatting with perfect strangers on the subway. Details about date while you wait. Oh, oh my goodness. Do you need a homie for life? This is one of the little kittens that was rescued from Louisiana. He was a Cajun kitty. And now he's an honorary Texan. You guys stick with us. All right, we're gonna let him down. GMSA at nine, we're gonna be talking about all the needs for the San Antonio Humane Society and how you can help them. And it's not just about adoption. Stick with us. And welcome back. It's 914. The San Antonio Humane Society is at capacity after opening their kennels to more than 100 animals affected by Hurricane Ida. The hallways and education center of the nonprofit now serving as a temporary safe haven while medical staff prepare them to be adopted. And those animals are under high stress, need help from the community in more ways than one. Alicia Beretta is live from the San Antonio Humane Society with more about how many of us can help. You've got your hands full there, Alicia. Yeah, good morning. We're a little distracted because I'm trying to get homie over here. He is just a little bundle of joy. He's not ready for adoption just yet, but let me tell you, there are plenty, plenty of ways to help, and it's not just adoption here at the San Antonio Humane Society. Right now, they're at capacity, so they really need help with donations. So if you can donate any food, uh, cat beds, blankets, dog beds, toys for these animals, that way they can socialize. But really what they need is a lot of love. So they'll need a lot of volunteers to come over here, help them bathe them, walk them, and just socialize. It's finally time for the one thing that has stayed consistent throughout the last few days, food. 
it's amazing. I mean, you just see it in their eyes. It does not take long to see that they've been through so much already. It's a long journey. There and like they say, where there's a will, there's a way. We are a full house. We are full capacity. The San Antonio Humane Society has improvised to protect and improve the lives of 50 dogs and 86 cats spared from the destruction caused by Hurricane Ida. We are definitely accommodating our new pets in our education room. We have crates filled there with our new dogs and then we're keeping our new kitties and cats in our medical building in the hallways. While medical staff works around the clock to make sure each furry friend is vaccinated and spayed or neutered, here's what the community can do to help ease the load. So we need pet food, we need cat beds, dog beds, uh, treats, we need uh, rubbing alcohol, we need blankets, towels, uh, toys, and you can either drop them off here at the shelter. We have a blue bin located right outside our doors. But most of all, these guys need love and a safe home, which they may soon find in the Alamo City. <laughs> He's being silly over here. So we just received an update Instead of those 86 cats, they actually helped save 104 cats, 50 dogs. So that total number goes up to 154. He sees my cord here. Although there aren't any official plans to accept more dogs and cats affected by Hurricane Ida, the San Antonio Humane Society is prepared. So they want to make more room for these animals that need shelter. So they're running a big promotion right now. It's that Hurricane Ida promotion. So adoption fees for all animals, excluding their ambassador ones, those will be 50% off. Alicia, what if people want to volunteer to walk or bathe some of these pets? What's that process like? Yes, that's huge. That's something that's so needed right now. So if anyone's interested in volunteering, fostering as well, they want to fill out an application on the San Antonio Humane Society's website. And if you just want to come walk these um, uh, the dogs or bathe them and just socialize because that's a big part of getting them ready for adoption, they can come any day. The San Antonio Humane Society is open seven days a week from noon to 7 p.m. Back to you guys. Thanks, Alicia. That's a great option. Some people don't have the room to keep them so they can help out in this way as well. Yep. Thank you, Alicia. Absolutely. Justin's here with a look at the weekend forecast and the current setup in the atmosphere right on top of us. It's that ridge of high pressure that we've kind of avoided most of the summer. It's close enough now, though, that it's really starting to crank up yeah. the heat. We saw the big time numbers yesterday. Let's look at the setup right now. There is that ridge of high pressure. It is going to shrink a little bit as we get into early next week, and that'll open the door for some showers and storms. But in the meantime, yeah, you guessed it, more heat. There is a little disturbance working around the uh, south side of it that may help to kick off a shower or two today, but I'm not too optimistic about rain chances. I, uh, the radar is going to look pretty similar to yesterday where we get a couple of afternoon pop-ups, and that's it. Underneath that ridge of high pressure, this is the departure from normal. Notice that all of Texas is above average or was above average yesterday, including here in San Antonio. And that may not seem like a lot, but when your average is 94 or 93 and you get up to 99, uh, just six degrees above the average, it, uh, it does make a difference and it has been toasty. If you're doing some travel across the state of Texas today, I know a lot of people are hitting the roads for Labor Day weekend. Looks pretty good. There could be a few thunderstorms uh, there in Houston. Uh, temperatures will uh, Obviously be very hot no matter where you go in the Lone Star State. Outside right now, mostly cloudy skies, a little bit of blue skies starting to show through there. 80 degrees at the airport. Dew point is at 76. That's a very high number, and that makes it feel like it's 85 outside. Our morning clouds starting to scatter out already. 81 Port SA, 77 Bernie Stage. You're at 79 in New Braunfels. A little bit more sun there and quite a bit more sun in Seguin. Uh, Gonzalez, Kennedy, same story. Clear skies. More cloud cover, though, as you go west, 79 right now in New Valley with mostly cloudy skies. And the heat index already being registered this morning in the low 90s around Pleasanton and Gonzales. 87 is what it feels like in Kennedy, and these numbers are going to shoot up quickly today. We expect that the heat index here in San Antonio will be close to 105. Some places could get close to 110 south and southeast of San Antonio. This number will come down some over the weekend, despite the fact our air temperature rises. And that's because uh, humidity will be a little bit lower Saturday and Sunday. Still, we're continuing with a heat index around 100 each and every day. Uh, looking at the radar, we've had some showers this morning closer to the coast. Some of those have tried to work inland with uh, very little success. I do think that as we get later into today, some of this activity will make it towards 
San Antonio, and we mentioned that 20% chance of rain today. This is around 5 o'clock. Doesn't show much. And the forecast calls for a high right around 98 with that 20% chance of rain stretching from about 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. or so. Very quickly out in the tropics, we have uh, Hurricane Larry, which is a pretty massive storm. This is going to be a major hurricane, but it stays generally out over the waters. We will watch what happens there with Bermuda. Hopefully it misses Bermuda to the east. We're also watching another little system here that could work its way into the Gulf of Mexico, about a 30% chance of development with this. It doesn't look like it has a whole lot of uh, great conditions for development here, but we'll keep an eye on it. it certainly bears some watching as it moves into the Gulf. 99 tomorrow and Sunday. Lower humidity, Labor Day, 20% chance of rain, a 30% chance there on Tuesday. I mentioned the door opens a little bit for some showers and storms, the, a, a weak boundary that works in. That could give us a little bit of rain to start next week, guys. Thank you, Justin. 921, about 81 degrees. And as children, we are taught not to talk to strangers, but one man decided to make a game out of doing just that. Up next on GMSA at 9, details on date while you wait. The New York City subway system isn't necessarily known for its friendliness. But Thomas Knox is on a mission to change that. A light bulb went over my head and I was like, what can I do to connect people? You know, we're so disconnected when we're traveling. Thomas coming up with date while you wait. Two chairs, a table, I uh, have a flower uh, in a bottle. I think it's a nice touch. And then I usually bring a board game with me. Some people sitting for just a few quick minutes as they wait for their train. And then as it started to get more popular, people would sit with me for 20, 30 minutes playing Connect Four with me, telling me their life stories. Despite the name, Date While You Wait isn't about finding love. Thomas says it's about connecting with our fellow human beings. Who are the people that stand out in your mind? Meaning the inventor of Connect Four, Howard Wexler, was, was a highlight for me. Other subway strangers, grateful just to be seen and be heard. I met with a, uh, an educator who had to stop teaching because she was diagnosed with an illness that, uh, that caused her to be in pain. Um, and she said sitting down with me in the subway was the first time she hasn't felt pain since she was diagnosed. Um, so that was something that really warmed my heart. Now, Date While You Wait has been ordered to series on a local channel in New York City. That heartwarming message front and center, even in the subway station. We all have something in common, no matter who we are, no matter where we're from. And if you can find that commonality, and, and that's kind of my goal when I'm having these conversations, then you can you can talk, you can you can uh, engage better. Thomas's Date While You Wait series has already been nominated for a New York Emmy Award. For more information on his new series, which premieres October 13th, check him out on datewhileyouwait.tv. Will Gans, ABC News, New York. Looks like fun. It, I, the Connect Four, I'm like, I'm in for that one. That'd be a fun day. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> right now, 927, about 81 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA at 9, it's week two of the high school football season. RJ Marcus and David will be in the studio to break down the games you can expect tonight. Plus an innovative way or innovative form of transportation, how NASA says air taxis will be an option in the future. And as we head into the Labor Day weekend, details on what local leaders are saying you need to know to keep you and your family safe in the midst of the pandemic. Labor Day is typically a holiday when family and friends gather. We have to remember we're still in the middle of a worldwide pandemic. City officials are asking people to stay mindful of our community's COVID-19 situation. Joining us live this morning to talk more about what leaders are saying ahead of the long Labor Day weekend is KSAT digital journalist Ferris Sabawi. Hey, Ferris. Hey, uh, happy Friday to y'all. Same to you, Ferris. First off, what was San Antonio Mayor Ron Nierberg's message about the Labor Day weekend? Yeah, last night during the county's COVID-19 update, uh, Mayor Ron Nuremberg just really wanted to stress that people, like y'all said a little bit earlier, that the pandemic is still not over, um, still going on. So he was just asking families to try to stay safe. He understands that gatherings are going to happen, but he suggested uh, gathering outside or in when well ventilated areas when possible. And also, uh, you know, Labor Day is a great time to barbecue, but uh, a, a great suggestion to help maybe cut down on some of that that spread of germs is to uh, individually prepackage meals and, and maybe have the plates ready before guests get there. So just a couple of easy things to keep it safe, maybe keep it outside and uh, those individually portioned meals uh, would be great things to help cut down on the spread of COVID-19. 
And Ferris, the positivity rate in Bear County has gone down, but what do we know about the other COVID-19 trends? Yeah, Stephanie, it's really a, a mixed bag when you look at these trends. The positivity rate has gone down. A lot of that is due to a lot of testing with, with schools coming back into session. Uh, but we're still seeing between, you know, 12 and 1300 cases a day. Our weekly average has pretty much leveled off, plateaued right around that. Um, and, you know, I was looking at the numbers yesterday, and in August alone, Bayer County reported 300 COVID-19 deaths. So while there are some things that are improving and the hospitalizations overall seem to be going down a little bit, uh, it's just really hard to forget, you know, all the people we've lost and, and that the infection levels that we're seeing are still uh, pretty high. So it's uh, not the time to let the guard down, definitely. Finally, what's been helping reduce hospitalization numbers? Yeah, Mark, this was a, a, a great point. You know, like I said, we have seen overall hospitalizations dip, but we're still seeing, uh, uh, Mayor Ron Nuremberg said last night, we're still seeing a record high number of hospital, uh, hospital admissions. But something that's been able to help is hospital services are now trying to defer care to patients at their home, which has helped in certain cases. And uh, Bayer County Judge Nelson Wolf also brought up that the Regeneron um, clinics where they administer those antibody, uh, those antibodies to people with COVID-19 has been a big help. And they've said it's made a noticeable difference in keeping people out of the hospital. So we do have some good news there. Uh, hope to keep it up. And really, I hope to see those hospitalizations, you know, steadily start dropping soon. Yes, we all hope for that. All right, Ferris, well, thank you for joining us. Have a good Labor Day Thanks, weekend, guys. Ferris. Yeah, you too. Thank you. Thank you. And taking a look outside with live cam, we're at 81 degrees now. Expecting those temperatures to heat up. So, and yeah, and actually, I guess a hot football Friday. It is going to be a hot football Friday. Uh, it, we, we've been on repeat the last three or four days now, and nothing really changes today. If you were at some of the football games last night, you know how hot it can be down there on some of those football fields. The tonight will be no different. Uh, let's look at the numbers right now. We've got uh, it's 80 degrees at the airport, 84 uh, already at Stinson. More sun to the east, a little bit more cloud cover as you go west. We're in the 70s up around Kerrville and Comfort. 80 right now in Uvalde with a bit of a cloud deck there. And as we look towards the airport, you can see some of the clouds in place here in San Antonio. It's 80 degrees at the airport. Dew point is at 76, and that's the number that really gets you. It's like a sun out there with southeast Julie winds at about five miles per hour. Labor Day weekend, good news here. Lower humidity Saturday and Sunday, but we'll be up near 100. Can we keep our streak alive of zero 100 degree days here in 2021? It's going to be a very close call. 98 Monday with a 20% chance of some showers and storms. Uh, all in all, pretty good weekend, three day weekend to get out. Uh, just stay cool if, uh, if you do have outdoor plans, guys. Thank you, Justin. Week two of the high school football season is underway and college is getting ready to kick off. David and RJ here to break down the big weekend ahead, starting off with our big game coverage. Gentlemen, good morning. Morning. It is I, week two. It is week two, and it's going to be hot. I'm a little worried about <laughs> going out there, but uh, hey, you know what? Give credit football, to all man. these uh, parents yeah. and kids that are making this happen. It's going to be a little warm out there. And, and speaking of all the parents and all the kids, we were out there. We were at uh, where were we? Like, Gus Stadium. Last we'll week. be at Lenoff mm -hmm. Stadium tonight. But I got to say that, man, it was fun to see people in the stands, mm -hmm. like stands. And some of these games were like full last weekend to kick off the season. And then last night there was some there were some good crowds. So the only thing we can do is just advise you to be safe when you go out there. If you feel like wearing a mask, wear your mask. I mean, you know, just kind of follow the protocols that, that, that you feel safe with. But, man, it was fun to see all the kids and all the fans actually at the game. Yeah, for high absolutely. School it's just it makes such a difference. Oh, yeah, for the kids on the field and for the for the people in the stands. Absolutely. Like absolutely. So, David, let's take a look at some of the games that right. we have coming up uh, tonight. As you mentioned, a couple of games yesterday and yes, ooh, right away. Ooh. Uh, Reagan Steele. So this is the game, the big game of the week. And David and I are going to be out there doing our pregame party before the action kicks off there at Lenhoff Stadium at 7 p.m. The Rattlers, of course, lost last week to Brennan Steele coming off of a big win over Hendricks. In, uh, last week. So, David, you excited about this one? I'm excited about that one. I'm excited about the second one, too. Judson and Lake Ooh, Travis, because yeah. Judson beat DeSoto last week here mm -hmm. in town. Mm -hmm. but they got to travel to Lake Travis, and Lake Travis is one of those teams that they seem to like have Justin's number. So yes, hopefully Lake Judson Travis can, is Lake Travis. Yeah. I mean, they're, <laughs> they're like a football factory. I mean, Judson is has been at that level as well, so that's going to be a fun one out there. Yeah, we're going to find out how good Judson really is. Judson may be 
the best team in town. Ooh. If they can yeah. win tonight, then then yeah, they they may just move up to that to that level. Yeah. So uh, let's check out got? these other games that That's we have coming up here. I think yeah, we had a few Madison, Smithson Valley at their Ranger Stadium. Always a fun scene out there up at uh, in Spring Branch, and then we have uh, Southside versus yeah, this, Somerset. This is going to be fun. Somerset coming off a big win last week. Coy Detmer, the new head coach, taking over for his dad over there at Somerset. Sonny Detmer and uh, got his first win. You know, that was an emotional time. So they mm -hmm. got the emotional out of the way. Now they can really get down to some cracking some heads. And, yeah. and that's good. That'll be a good game tonight. And that is going to be a good game. The Cardinals, of course, uh, Richie Torres is the top quarterback in our area. He threw eight touchdowns last week. <laughs> eight touchdowns, he didn't play David. The full game. He didn't even eight? play the full game. He eight. had six in the first half. Eight. Wow. Six in the first yeah. half. Yeah, they played uh, Brownsville Lopez down there in Corpus. But uh, yeah. Yeah, Getting so that would be fun. Well, hey, right. you know a little quarterback, uh, Richie Thoris, and, of course, yeah. the Detmer family. There's a lot yeah. of quarterback That's lineage there. Some, uh, some good action. Yeah. Right. All right, uh, let's check out what, a couple more, more set sets of games here. Alamo Heights and Churchill. This is going to be a good one. Alamo mm -hmm. Heights had a good game last week. And uh, what, Bernie? And that, uh, but that was a back-and-forth game. Yeah, that was a good one. And yeah. taking, on the, taking on a big 6A powerhouse. There we go. Yeah, and, of course, uh, across the street, Central Catholic taking on Bernie Geneva. The Buttons, love that nickname there. Uh, a very good team. A lot of skilled players there on Central Catholic's team, including their quarterback, offensive line. Good we stuff. mentioned, uh, I think, college football kicked off last night. And, of course, this weekend it is Texas taking on... Who? Here we go. Who? Louisiana. Who's Texas playing? Louisiana. <laughs> <laughs> um, you I might know recognize... Steph is worried. I know Stephanie's worried about we this. We mentioned Judson, right? <laughs> yes. And Lake yeah. Travis. Yes. Well, the starting quarterback for Texas was against Judson on Yeah, he's a Lake occasions. Travis kid. Oh. There he is. Because he's from Lake Travis. So, there, nice. so it all kind of ties together. See how that all works? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, and, of course, <laughs> they got a new head coach in Sarkeesian. So we'll see, uh, we'll see how they do. They're talking... That, you know, big powerhouse from Louisiana, Louisiana. So, you know, <laughs> Texas has got to start off a little slow. Uh, Louisiana is ranked in the top 25, yeah. so yeah. that should be a fun one here. Another debut here, uh, Haynes King going to be taking over for Kellen Mond there in College Station as AM gets ready. Look at DeMarvin Leal, speaking of Judson, Judson alum right there. Uh, big one here, Kent State. I know I know Justin's shaking in his yeah. boots over there yeah. Yeah. over <laughs> the Kent State Golden <laughs> Flashes. Where, J Justin didn't even want to stick around for I know. For this, he, for oh, this, there he is. So. But, but listen, so they're so – they're starting a freshman quarterback, mm -hmm. right? So they start right. off with Kent State, and then they go to Colorado, eh, and then they play New Mexico. <laughs> so this, this, for this kid to start off the season with these three teams, just what the doctor ordered, mm -hmm. or Jumbo ordered. Just what he wanted. <laughs> hey, Jimbo just got a nice, Jimbo uh, just got a nice, nice, raise, nice contract. Yeah, yeah. So uh, a lot of expectations out there in Aggieland. Did he play this right? season and already keep taking on more cash? How does that work? <laughs> How do you do that? One good year. One good year so far. So we'll see. And then, and then of course, they got to get into the SEC. Yeah. And of course, the other big game this weekend is at six o'clock oh, on ESPN. <laughs> it will be Texas Tech traveling to take on the. Houston Cougars. Yes. Texas Tech has a new quarterback. That's going to be a fun game. That's oh, in Houston uh, yeah. at their uh, Energy Stadium. And just want to remind you guys again, for all the games tonight, you can stream a lot of these games oh, yeah. on our BGC app. I'm pulling in Adam Schefter here, looking at just the lineup here. There's about like 10 games that we have ready to go to stream available. Download our app. And there you go. And you can find David and myself later on tonight. So, Mark and Steph, when you're at home tonight. Yes, sir. And you can't decide. You just scroll through there and you just pick a game. Cool. And, just, and then if you go, okay, well, that's a good game, but I want to see another game, then you go to another game. It's Y'all can get great. like seven, eight games sitting at home and, tonight. Enjoy and, your weekend. And SFA and Tech are going to oh, play boy. on September 11th. <laughs> and so we've already got a non-monetary wager yeah, going. We got, we got uh -huh. Lumberjacks going at Lubbock versus the Red Raiders. We'll get more into that coming yeah, up gotta, next let's, week. Let's That'll be one fun. First. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Enjoy your high school, yeah. college weekend. You guys have fun tonight. Stay All cool. Right. Will Thanks. do. Mean that Thanks more that. ways than one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Any morning consumer news, another record for the S&P 500 heading into trading today after gaining 0.3% in yesterday's trading. The Dow gained 0.4% and NASDAQ was up 0.1%. Traders were encouraged by the weekly unemployment claims report, which was a pandemic low. There are some concerns about today's August jobs report, though. After payroll processor ADP this week said the private sector created 374,000 <coughs> jobs that missed expectations. Latest rise in inflation could mean a significant bump in Social Security payments. USA Today says predictions show a 6.2% cost of living adjustment next year. Over half a million Walmart workers are in for a raise. The country's largest retailer now says it will increase its minimum wage to $12 an hour starting September 25th. 
If you think ride sharing is innovative, how about an air taxi? The folks at NASA think those could be the transportation option of the future. They're trying out the tech right now with a company called Joby Aviation. A company makes this all electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. NASA is testing its performance and acoustics. Someday you might be able to take one of these between cities. Talk about a commute that will fly by. <laughs> yeah, it looks cool. Time now is 942, about 82 degrees out there. Watching GMSA at 9, the music group ABBA is back with new music after four decades. Up next, when fans can expect that album to be released. And welcome back. It's 945 Mamma Mia. Here we go again. Swedish music group ABBA is releasing its first new album in four decades. So the first two singles from Voyage are available to stream right now. The entire 10 song album will be released November 5th. And the pop group also announced a comeback concert in London in spring of 2022. It will feature ABBA's virtual avatars and a 10 piece live band. Popular 90s sitcom Seinfeld is coming to Netflix. You'll be able to stream all the hijinks with Jerry George, Elaine, and Kramer on October 1st. Netflix signed a five-year streaming deal with Sony Pictures after its contract ended with Hulu. Getting ready for high school football. I feel bad for uh, all the people who've had to, or the students who had to practice in the heat. And now, you know, the parents will be out there with them. Yeah, I mean, they say it's part of conditioning, right, Justin Horn? But it doesn't make it any easier. Looking so much forward to uh, autumn and the changes that come with that in another, what, two or three months? Yeah, it could be. <laughs> <laughs> the way it's looking. Uh, you know, we talked about those fronts. It's usually like late September, but... Generally, we don't see the really good cool down to maybe October. Well, so let's we got, focus we on this weekend, yeah. right? Yeah. Yes, there, there are some positives. Uh, it will be a, a little less humid over the weekend. And maybe you're heading out to float the river. It's, it's a great weekend for that. Temperatures will be around 99 Saturday and Sunday. So a pool, river, beach, find a place to stay cool. Those mornings will be okay in the mid-70s. Uh, hot weekend, maybe some rain chances to start next week. Uh, take a look at this. We've had zero 100 degree days. We average about 18 per year. So we're doing really well in 2021, but we've been at 99 the last couple days and it sure seems like we're going to get there over the weekend. Right now we're forecasting 99, but I would not be surprised at all. You look back at some of the years where we uh, saw a ton of triple digit days. The, uh, the highest we've ever seen is 2009. We had 59 and uh, 57 there in 2011, 41 in 2013. So looking at that, you say, okay, maybe it's not so bad this year. Uh, outside right now, we've got mostly cloudy skies and temperatures at 82 at the airport, 84 stints and 82 Kelly, still holding on some, to some upper 70s there at Randolph. 80 Hondo, 80 Tarpley, 78 Bandera, 79 in Kerrville, and 81 right now, Carrizo Springs, 85 in Gonzales. One of the hot spots this morning, they're seeing quite a bit of sun there and the humidity so thick. 98 is what it feels like. Feels like 95 in Kennedy. We already have a heat index of 103 in Corpus Christi. Pretty incredible. I think the heat index climbs to about 105 here in San Antonio. Beeville could go as high as 110, maybe even higher than that. That is where you start to see some of those heat advisories and they have been posted down there around the Corpus Christi area. Technically, we're not under a heat advisory here, but you got to be careful. These numbers are no joke. And looking at the dew point tracker, uh, I'm, I mentioned humidity falls off a little bit this weekend. It drops into the low 60s. We, we may even see some 50s during the afternoon. That'll feel a little bit better, but again, the air temperatures in the upper 90s. So uh, hot is hot. And the radar and satellite shows we do have some showers and storms gathering over the coast. These will try to work inland. And I think by the afternoon, there's a possibility of one or two of these showers or storms making it up towards San Antonio. We'll fast forward here to 5 o'clock. does show one or two isolated storms, but don't get too excited. I don't think we're going to see all that much today. High pressure is still in control for now. This shrinks and kind of goes away by the time we get into Monday. And that's why I think it opens a door. Weak a boundary maybe coming out of North Texas could help to kick off some showers and storms late on Monday and then again on Tuesday. Those are kind of our two days I want to watch for any sort of rain. And then after that, high pressure from the west. And this is actually a stronger ridge begins to build in. And that may make for some pretty hot temperatures to uh, round out next week. Lower humidity this week in 99 both days, 98 Monday with a 20% chance rain in a 30% shot there on Tuesday with a high of 96 guys.
Very good. We will keep cool, Justin. Thank you. Um, right now it's about 10 till and 82 degrees. And keeping you and your family busy this Labor Day weekend. After the break, details on where you can go to have some fun. And tomorrow on GMSA, how you can help people around the world with a touch of a button. We're talking about the Be My Eyes smartphone app that helps the visually impaired with everyday tasks. The Labor Day weekend is finally here. There are lots of things for you and your family to do around our area. First up, the Labor Day Artisan Show at the San Antonio Riverwalk. It will feature vendors with pottery, jewelry, and paintings. The free event is happening today through Monday near the Chamber of Commerce and shops at River Center. Also free on the Riverwalk, the Ford Parade of Lanterns. You'll be able to see 10 boats filled with illuminated lanterns. That's today through Sunday starting at 8. If you want to head out of town, you can check out the fair up in Kendall County. You'll be able to see livestock show, rodeo, food and crafts. Fair runs today through Sunday on River Road up in Bernie. In Johnson City, you and your family can check out the exotic resort zoo. The zoo offers drive through options or a tour guide can take you through. Uh, the park is open from 9 to 5 all weekend. For a complete list of things to do this long Labor Day weekend, head to KSAT.com. And a quick look at the roads with TransGuide this morning. Looking there at I-35 in Maine and I-10 at Proband. There, things are moving. And it's already pretty warm out there. We're going to see a very hot day. 98, 20% chance of rain. A hot weekend. Rain chances more or less go away, but come back Monday and Tuesday. Those are above average temperatures all the way through that seven-day forecast. Justin, you remember hearing about that, that unusual artist named Banksy? I do. He does all those kind of, uh, not jokes, but... I remember like the, the picture shredded itself. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So it's funny that there you say that because there it is. This article is on KSAT.com. And so the artwork uh, that self shredded just after it sold for $1.4 million is up for sale again at several times the previous price. Sotheby said today, Love is in the Bin will be offered at sale in London on October 14th. The pre-sale estimate right now, 4 million pounds to 6 million pounds. That's Roughly, you ready for this? 5.5 million to 8.3 million dollars oh U.S. So that consists, like you can see there, a half shredded canvas bearing a spray painted image of a girl reaching for a heart shaped red balloon. Then known as Girl with Balloon, the work was sold in October 2018. Just as an anonymous European buyer made the winning bid, a hidden shredder embedded in the frame by Banksy, word to life, leaving half the canvas hanging from the frame in strips. That's nuts. But the buyer decided to go through with the purchase, a decision that would be vindicated if the picture achieves its estimated price. Mm -hmm. right. uh, one, uh, the chairman of Sotheby said, Love is in the Bin was born in the most spectacular artistic happening of the 21st century when Girl with the Balloon self-destructed on our sale room. Banksy sparked a global sensation that has since become a cultural phenomenon. Everyone gets Gasps when it happens. I remember I it bet. too. It's going to make a fortune. Wow. Even better now. Have a great weekend.